Jesus died so we might live. Amen. Textual service based for our messages are epistle reading, second second Corinthians five, sixteen to twenty one, dear friends in Christ. A phrase that we have spoken or have heard spoken when we see non believers faced with worldly problems is how do people make it without Christ? Now, a group of believers may also utter these words when they are receiving peace and comfort in their troubles. The answer to that question, how do people make it without Christ, is they don't. But you see, everyone ponders that question. The atheist, the agnostic, those searching, those turning their back on the church, they deal with death and challenges and the problems of life, and without Christ they have nowhere to turn. Being human, human can slap you in the face, and with a brain, everyone knows that sooner or later, someone is controlling this rolling sphere where we make our home. So let's take Paul's words this morning and see the importance of our Lord and what it means for our lives. So one more time we say, how do people make it without Christ? Now on either side, heaven or earth, the non-believer lives in a state of nothingness or eternal damnation. There is no hope or purpose. I want to listen to this from a Dr. Howard J. Van Til in an article entitled, Faith and the Cosmos, Our Search for Life. Perhaps we should ask even deeper questions about life, not just where is life, but why is life? What is its ultimate purpose? Is it to experience love? Questions like this take us far beyond planetary cosmology and into the realm of human experience. From the purely physical to the profoundly spiritual, if the giving and receiving of love is the ultimate purpose of life, of life, then why is there pain and grief? There is much that I do not know, but this I have learned. One's greatest experiences of love's light follow one's darkest nights of need. Perhaps that is what finding life is really about. Aspirin, anyone? Talk about depressing. You see, life without Christ is nothing but an ongoing puzzle with more and more questions. How do people make it without Christ? They don't. They never have. They never will. Listen to Paul's words in our text. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him that way no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, but entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. You see, all of Dr. Van Til's questions are answered in these few verses. Man rebelled, decay and death, pain and grief, to use Van Til's words. And God did something about this separation, our separation from God. He was reconciling the world and not counting their trespasses against them. them. And God sent Christ to pay for our sins and earn for us forgiveness. And then he also gave us a reason for existing. He has entrusted us, you and I, 
with the message of reconciliation. We have words of comfort and hope for all the Dr. Van Tills. When I was an accountant in my dad's business, each month I had to reconcile the bank statements. This means that what we had in the ledger needed to line up with the bank's figures. Like I do with my checkbook at home, I sat there at my desk until every penny was accounted for. Being three cents off could take an hour or longer to figure out, and it was pure relation when I found those three, three cents. God does the same with us. Our reconciliation took considerable doing. Only God can manage it. In this scenario, we have no part in the reconciliation. God has done it all. We could never track down or correct every error or sin that we've committed in our dealing with God and neighbor. God simply declares our accounts reconciled by stating this. This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. The father accepted the son's sacrifice and we are complete. We are forgiven and heaven bound. We make it with Christ as our Savior. Fortunately, all of us sitting here today know someone, or a lot of someones, who are on the outside of Christianity. Oh, they put on a good front for you and I, but inside they hurt. They long for purpose. They ache for peace in their lives. Who can share that with them? You and I. Our text says to us, we are ambassadors for Christ. We know that ambassadors in our world, they represent countries, and that the government then sends them. Christ has sent us. We speak his words. We share his love. We talk of his plan of salvation. Now, not everyone, not everyone is going to eagerly receive this message, but speak we do because there is no more glorious calling. There is no higher honor God could give us than to be ambassadors of reconciliation. So you see, our world continues to search. Their human reasoning, always looking for answers. We know the answer. Aren't you glad you know Christ? And doesn't that change the way you live and see everything? Everything? Amen.